there is a clear distinction between the management of municipal solid waste and constru construction and demolition waste at the landfill site in the sense that municipal solid waste requires more attention in terms of treatment as compared to construction and demolition waste. In fact, people are of the opinion that construction and demolition waste need not to be given so much attention because one, it is termed as inert waste and it is believed that it does not harm the soil or the impact is not so much as compared to municipal solid waste. However, keeping construction and demolition waste at landfill sites could increase landfill bedding cause negative environmental impact and loss of economic opportunities. As a result, our study focused on analyzing the environmental and economic benefits of establishing a centralized construction and demolition waste recycling facility in Fargo, North Dakota. My name is Simon Bwedi Boateng. I'm a master's student from the Department of Construction Management and Engineering, North Dakota State University. And I'm here today to present to you our research on the benefits of recycling, construction, and demolition waste. First of all, I would like us to look at a brief introduction about construction and demolition waste. The construction sector consumes 40% of the total raw materials extracted globally and generates about 35% of the world's waste. Construction and demolition waste generation has a rate that exceeds 3 billion tons globally. The United States Environmental Protection Agency reports that 569 million tons of construction and demolition waste were generated in 2017 alone, which was actually a 6% increase in what was generated in 2014. Landfill disposal has been the conventional construction and demolition waste management practices over various countries around the world, including the United States. Keeping waste at landfill sites can result in resource depletion and increase in emissions which affect the environment. Recycling has been identified as a more effective waste management approach. Recycling of Construction and demolition waste help reduce the use of natural resources to produce raw materials. Recycling of construction and demolition waste is generally low in the United States. In fact, about 38% of construction and demolition waste were recycled in 2014. In North Dakota, all generated construction and demolition waste are disposed at the various landfill sites across the cities in the state. Various studies conducted in Europe, the Asia, and South America on construction and demolition waste and its benefits have reported different results, partly due to the different kind of parameters and the different kind of LCA or life cycle assessment database that have been used in this study and also the different kinds of economic variabilities that exist in, you know, these um, geographic context. Therefore, the purpose of this study is to apply life cycle assessment and life cycle costing to evaluate the benefits of establishing a construction and demolition waste recycling facility in Fargo, specifically to Fargo. We know that this will be beneficial in providing education on the missed opportunities due to landfill disposal of construction and demolition waste. It will also set the basis for decision makers and for waste managers in the city and in the state as large to rethink construction and demolition waste management practices in Fargo, North Dakota. It will also provide information on the economic value that can be derived from recycling construction and demolition waste. To achieve our purpose for this study, we went through a three-step approach. Number one was to conduct interviews with the city waste management authorities and also assess the current waste management practices in Fargo, North Dakota. After we established all our facts from the city authorities, we got to know that the construction waste ends up at the landfill site 
and then it's kept there without being recycled. And then also for the municipal solid waste, some of the waste which are recycled as curbside recycling are also transported to nearby regions for recycling. We got to know that something had to be done within these management practices. So we decided to apply life cycle assessment to actually assess the environmental impact of having a recycling facility as against the current practices of the city. After that, we applied life cycle cost analysis to be able to ascertain whether having a recycling facility and actually recycling construction and demolition waste could be beneficial and then the rate of investment will be worth whatever capital that will be invested into such a facility because recycling establishing a recycling facility is quite cost or capital intensive so you would want to know your rate of return at what year you are going to break even so that when investors want to come in or when the state officials want to um, undertake such an initiative they will know what they are going in for Life cycle assessments per the ISO can be performed in four stages. That is the goal and scope, the inventory analysis, the impact assessments, and then interpretation. So we subjected our study to all these four stages. And our goal was to compare the environmental impacts of recycling versus landfilling. And our system boundary focused on recycling process as well as you know, landfilling, construction and demolition waste. The functional unit was the recycling of, and landfilling of one ton of construction and demolition waste. That is what we considered, the units that we considered that what it takes to recycle and to landfill one ton of construction and demolition waste, just so that we'll be able to lay emphasis for comparison. Later on in the slides, we'll come on the system boundary and I will explain what really the unit processes in the recycling and landfilling that this study focused on. The life cycle inventory data was built using primary data from public and private database. For example, the United States Environmental Protection Agency. We also use data from Department of Energy and also existing literature. After we built the inventory data, we used Sustainable Minds LCA software to model the environmental impact associated with the unit processes that are involved in recycling and then landfilling. In the life cycle costing analysis, our aim was to identify the costs and the profitability involved in operating the recycling facility just so that if someone wants to invest, the person will be able to know the details involved in such an investment initiative. We, it involved quantifying the capital expenditure and then the operational expenditure that will be required in operating the facility. So in terms of the capital expenditure, we found out how much it will cost to establish a facility. In this case, we assumed a $20 million figure this figure was identified from an article from the Association of Recyclers. They gave out that figure that on the average, between 15 million and 25 million can be used to establish a recycling facility. So we just found a figure in between and used it for our analysis. And then also operational expenditure involves wages for staff, maintenance, uh, utilities, transportation costs, and what have you. So we calculated all these parameters involved in operation and then ran them to a future value using the future value formula so that we'll be able to strike an analysis and then form a basis for um, comparison in terms of, you know, um, discounting those future value to present value so that you will know what you are going in for. And one thing that um, comes into play in this is that you have to know that what you are recycling, will it be able to sell? How are you going to market what is recycled? So we performed a market survey to ascertain the end market value of every recycling material or recycled material. In this case, how much it 
um, a recycled concrete cost, recycled wood, recycled steel. We found the data on all these, and then we used it for our analysis. That is, that will be your revenue for the recycling facility. So the, after we did that, the revenue generation was then compared to the capital expenditure and then the operational expenditure. So if you deduct the um, if you deduct your capital and operational expenditure from your revenue, whatever you get is your either loss or your profits. So we did this in, ad, in order to ascertain whether it's going to be a loss investment or a profit bearing investment. As I mentioned earlier that we are going to go into details concerning the system boundary for a life cycle and um, assessment. This is the system boundary for recycling one ton of construction and demolition waste. And then this was the system boundary that the study considered when we want to landfill construction and demolition waste. So you can see from here that we, in the recycling process, it involves hauling, separation, processing, and then disposal of rejected fragments because after you have separated and processed you know the recycled materials that you need there are certain fragments that cannot be used for anything those have to be sent back to the landfill but in all of this process there are inputs in terms of transportation energy demands raw materials and water so those inputs are what we have here and those are the inputs that you use to build your life cycle inventory data and from that that is where you are going to perform your impact assessment with the sustainable mine software that i talked about earlier so when you model these inputs to know what exactly is going into these processes you will know how recycling one ton of construction and demolition waste actually impacts the environment in terms of certain impact categories that we selected, which will be discussed early on in these slides. So with the inputs, you would have an output of emissions, solid waste, and also economic costs. All those things were um, analyzed. And then what impacts are they going to have? If you have an impact here, you have your impacts here. Your impact is right here. What impact are they going to have on the environment and then on the landfill? That is where the impact assessment is going to tell us after we've modeled um, the, the life cycle inventory data. On this part, you have the landfilling of one ton of construction and demolition waste. In fact, our thinking was that if we get construction and demolition waste from various construction activities and we dump them at the landfill site, we miss the opportunity to reuse some of these materials. For example, concrete. Concrete can be used as aggregates and other studies have actually shown how what environmental burden manufacturing concrete brings onto the environment. So we decided to consider the, the disposal and then the manufacturing of the constituent materials involved in construction and demolition waste. So what we did was we found a data from United States Environmental Protection Agency, which gives in percentages the constituent materials of construction and demolition waste generated in the U.S. So per those percentages, we found the amount of, for example, concrete, wood, um, cardboard and whatsoever that will be that or that is likely to be in one ton of construction and demolition waste so when we found all these percentages we were able to model for the impact that it takes to dispose for example concrete and then to remanufacture concrete just so that we'll know that by keeping the waste at the landfill site this is the burden that we are releasing onto the environment. So in, the, in that instance, too, we considered the inputs in terms of energy, water, raw materials, and then 
equipment involved in the disposal and then the manufacture. One thing that we have to note is that in all these processes, transportation is one very vital thing because you need to transport the waste from one point to the other, from generation point to the landfill site. You know, the, the emissions from the tracks and all those things affect the environment. So those were the things that we were considering. So we wanted to know the output in terms of emission and then the solid waste and economic cost and how these impact the environment. And then also after the waste have been dumped on the landfill side, what are the end of life impacts that they are going to have on the landfill side? So this was the basis for our analysis and this information is what we use to build the life cycle inventory data, which was then used for the modeling of the impacts categories and assessments. Now, some of the impacts categories that we adopted for this study were acidification, ecotoxicity, eutrophication, global warming potential, ozone depletion, fossil fuel depletion, carcinogenic, as a cancer causing ability, non-carcinogenics, respiratory effects, and then smog. So we did a comparison between recycling and then landfilling. So what these results symbolize is that if I am recycling one ton of construction and demolition waste, these are the impacts that the various processes have on the environment. So you can see separation, processing, hauling, and then disposal. So you can see that separation has quite a lot of um, impacts on these categories because you know the waste we assume that the waste comes in as a mixed construction and demolition waste so it takes a lot of time to separate them into various constituent materials and in so doing a lot of you know electrical energy and then um, diesel inputs are involved in such process so that's how you see the processing the separation and then the processing having higher environmental impacts than the other um, areas. And then you can see the hauling. The hauling involves a lot of transportation. So you can see that in terms of ozone depletion and then fossil fuel depletion, you have the hauling taking so much impact. Now, when we look at this side for the landfilling, looking at how the various selected materials impact the environment. So we have concrete, we have steel, we have asphalt, we have bricks, and then wood. You can see that concrete and then steel have very high, and then asphalt have very high amount of um, environmental impact to the various categories that we selected. And then the, the, the one thing to note is that concrete, steel, and asphalt are mostly, mostly, and widely used construction materials. So what it means is that we cannot afford to be keeping these materials at the landfill site without recycling them. So for example, concrete, it takes a lot to remanufacture concrete. But what it means is that if we're able to recycle concrete, we save some of the percentage of concrete that we have to manufacture. We save some of the virgin materials that we have to go in for to manufacture concrete. So this, is the, is, the, is the fundamental importance of recycling. Just so that we will not have to go back to um, taking virgin materials and raw materials to remanufacture some of these you know, products. Aside from the, the burden that they, they, they introduce to the landfill, remanufacturing them also brings in a huge um, environmental impact. The next slide, excuse me. The next slide will actually focus on the comparison between recycling and landfilling. And there you understand how the two processes actually impact the environment. And then you'll be able to actually strike which um, waste management approach is the better. Now in comparison, you can see that landfilling is overtaking recycling in the various impact categories. For example, global warming, global warming from here, you can see that landfilling actually has a higher global warming potential than 
recycling, and then also carcinogenics. Carcinogenics, non-carcinogenics, and then um, respiratory effects. And then in acidication and then ecotoxicity is almost like the same. And then there is one important thing to notice here that in the case of eutrophication, um, in the case of eutrophication and then ozone depletion, recycling seems to have overtaken landfilling here. This situation is partly because of how North Dakota generates its electric power because the separation and processing process actually required a lot of electricity and in North Dakota much of the generated power electric power is from coal you know because of how this coal process is manufactured when you use the coal process manufacturing process in your life cycle inventory data you are going to get a high environmental burden because manufacturing coal will actually impact the environment negatively so what it means is that to be able to reduce the impact of recycling in this scenario what we have to do is that we have to try as much as possible to manually separate some of these construction and demolition waste, just so that we can use minimal electric energy. And then if we do this, it means that you have this figure dropping, dropping quite appreciably. And then you will see that for eutrophication and other uh, impact factors, you will see that it's either they are on the same level or landfilling will have greater environmental impact than recycling. So now this is the life cycle cost analysis results which have been shown in the graph that you see. And um, the first one to my left is actually a comparison between the operation cost and then the revenue. So you can see from here that in the first year we do not have any revenue. So the first year in terms of revenue is zero. But then when we go to the first year, we need an amount of money to start the operation before we can actually generate revenue. So the operation cost here has, you know, a certain value. But when you look at the second year, there is something really fascinating happening here. That the second year, the revenue that is generated from the facility is quite higher than the operational cost. Therefore, when you, when you deduct the operational cost from the revenue, you have an amount of money. And because this revenue generation is high above, is here, high above the, high above the operational cost, which is somewhere here, that is profit for you. So one thing to note here is that per our analysis, from the first year, if we are not considering the capital investment that we put in um, um, establishing the recycling facility, and we just consider the operation cost and then the revenue, we can see that just at the beginning of the second year, you're already making a profit. And then the curve keeps on rising and rising and rising and rising. And you can see that beyond, beyond the second year, the revenue keeps going higher than the it keeps going higher than the operational cost the amount of money that you need to actually operate the facility so what it means here is that if we are taking away the initial capital investment that we invested in recycling the facility establishing the recycling facility we are actually making profits from the first the second year beginning from the second year we are making profits that tells you the economic benefits of having a recycling facility that you are able to generate income from the recycled materials that are generated from recycling that means that this income that we see here would have been lost if these wastes are kept on the landfill and we'll end up actually spending money to treat them 
whilst they are at the landfill when we can actually recycle them sell some of these recycled materials and then earn uh, a revenue and let's not forget that whilst we generate revenue we are also creating jobs because the operational cost in, in, uh, includes wages for staff and then also these staff will also be paying taxes which 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 will be generating income for the state authorities or the city authorities and then people will also be earning an income thereby earning a living and then by so doing you improve the economic standards of the city now let's look at something fascinating here this graph actually shows comparison where we have added the fixed capital to the operational cost because we wanted to see that if we are taking into consideration the fixed capital and then the operational cost how long is it going to take us to break even considering the revenue generation that comes out of the process and we could see that at the 20th or the 21st year the two curves actually met which actually symbolizes or signify your break even point so it means that if you are considering the investment capital of 20 million dollars that was assumed for the initial investment process on the 21st year you would have broken even or on your uh, on your investment and beyond the 21st year whatever will be generated is actually your profit this is our analysis which actually proved that recycling construction and demolition waste is actually a very profitable venture and it's something that if the city is going to pursue or undertake it's going to be it's going to augur well for the city and all the people that that lives in it because it's actually been proven per analysis that if you invest 20 million dollar in a recycling facility in your 21st year you would have broken even and start earning returns on your investment now per our life cycle assessment analysis we conclude that recycling proved a better waste management alternative for the city than landfilling and also if we are recycling one ton of construction and demolition waste we can end up reducing carbon footprint by 40 47 carbon dioxide equivalent kilogram that is the savings in emissions that the, the the city is going to benefit from recycling just a ton of construction and demolition waste we also concluded that recycling generates revenue of 29.85 dollars per ton revenue of 29.85 dollars per ton and also recycling can generate a tax revenue of 3.22 dollars per ton for this we can actually conclude that recycling construction and demolition waste is a much better alternative than the existing practice of keeping the waste at the landfill site in Fargo, North Dakota. Thank you very much for your time. This is an ongoing study, so any inputs that can improve the study is greatly appreciated. You can contact us on the email addresses that you see and then in terms of acknowledgement we would like to acknowledge EBSCOR for their support towards this work we would like to express our sincere gratitude to them for their constant support thank you very much